Howdy ho YouTube, Major Cord here. It's currently 2 in the morning, and here in Buffalo it is what we like to call fucking hot. Um, so I have a bit of insomnia, and I figured I'd do some contest entries that I need to get in. So this is going to be a video response for JPunishment26. Um, he's running, I forget what subscriber um, number it is right now, but a contest. And it's a really awesome giveaway um, he's doing. He's giving away a lot of awesome stuff. So, you know, if you want to go over and subscribe to him and get in on that contest, I highly recommend it. Um, he's a really good channel. And he wants to see our, you know, high-end knives and what we think of them. Because he's kind of in the market for some higher-end knives. Um, and I know, I think he wanted to see a knife that was above $100, but I don't own any. So, because I'm just, you know, I'm a broke college kid. I keep my... Purchases under, um, you know, under $75 usually. And even that's splurging for me. So, I have my four most expensive knives. And I'm going to go through what I like about them. Um, just to give you an idea of why I, bu why I bought them. Why I really, really love them. And, um, you know, why I keep them around, essentially. And I'm going to start off with a pair of Manixes here. Man-I? Man-O? I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is the Spyderco Manix, um, in black G10, it was a really crappy opening, and this is the Manix Lightweight in blue FRN. Um, both of these are really great knives. This is in 154CM and this is in CTS BD1, and as you can see this has Spyderco's traditional saber grind, this has a full flat grind, um, you know, hourglass clip, spider wire clip, and both have the ball bearing lock. Um, this one is just jimped to high heaven, like it's, you know, really good and secure all over the place. Um, and this I think runs 75 or 80 bucks. This is easily my most expensive knife. It's also my heaviest, probably weighing in around five or six ounces. This is just a, a hell of a knife, like you want to get some, you know, really hard work done I'd recommend this knife. This is a beater. This is a, you know, just a kick-ass knife. Um, so if you're looking for a new duty knife, perhaps, look into this. I know you're on a Spider Co. kick. Um, I see you've got the, you know, the whole Tenacious lineup, and those are awesome knives. I own two Tenaciouses myself, and I think that this is almost an upgraded Tenacious. Like, this is the full-on USA-produced version of the Tenacious, almost. Um... I think they're very comparable, is what I'm trying to say, through my late night babbling. But it's very comfortable in hand, you can choke up on it, and it's just an all-around good knife. I mean, even in the reverse grip, it's very comfortable. There's just... There's very little bad I can say about this knife, except that it's heavy. Um, the weight is the only thing I don't like about this knife, but that's really solved by this knife, which weighs all about two ounces, I think. And that makes this knife perfect for EDC. It has everything that this knife has. You know, what I love about it. The 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 grip, you know. Wonderful grip. Has the jimping up here. It's lacking a lot of the spine jimping. I mean, it's textured in, but you really don't get as good of a, a grip here. But you get a ton of grip from the bi-directional texturing on the handle. I mean, your thumb is not going anywhere. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of molded in jimping. So you still have a, a ton of good grip, um, but it weighs a lot less. There's no steel liners in this knife, whereas its heavier cousin here is obviously big and beefy and just full steel liners, not even milled out. Um, the one big difference, though, is that this is pin construction. You're not going to be able to adjust your pivot, whereas this one, you have full Torx construction. Um, and I like that especially for a hard-use knife. However, this one is not a knife that I ever intend on using hard. This is just light EDC tasks. And since this ball bearing lock is self-adjusting, over time any blade play um, will essentially just be worked out. So over the life of the knife, um, you know, it'll, it'll account for its own movement, essentially. And it's just a really smooth knife. You can open it with the ball bearing lock, um, or obviously the thumb hole. And it's just such a smooth knife. I mean, you hold the pressure on that lock and this knife swings so freely. Um, there's just no 
like no friction in there at all. The washer system on this is just amazing. So the pair of them, you know, either one is a knife I'd recommend. It just depends on your, your needs, really. Do you need a heavy-duty knife or do you need a light-duty EDC knife? Um, as I said, I think this is around 75 bucks. This is probably 65 and then, you know, keep going for Spyderco. The Endura is obviously one of my favorite knives. This, I think, runs about 60 to 65 bucks. Comes in a ton of colors. Obviously very ergonomic. Um, VG10 steel and almost a 4-inch blade. Um, you know, what isn't there to like? VG10 holds its edge really, really well. It's a Seki City Japan-made knife. And... You know, this knife is just fantastic. It's a lockback, so it's very strong, smooth, um, FRN handles, and they are steel lined in there. So, you know, there's really nothing you can do to this knife to um, destroy it. You have to try it really, really hard to destroy this thing. The pocket clip is Spider Coast traditional um, hourglass clip, and it's four way positionable. So, lefty, righty. Tip up, tip down, you're good. And again, the bi-directional texturing. You have a lot of good grip. Um, this is my, one of my most carried knives. I haven't been carrying any of these recently just because I'm on a, a slip joint kick, but when I do carry uh, clip folders, this one and this one, and of course this one because it's so darn light, are among my most carried. Um, they're just they're awesome knives. And these two because they're blue, and I love blue knives. But this you can get in almost any color, and it's little cousin, the Delica. Um, also a great knife, same steel, essentially the same general look, and also a ton of wonderful colors. And then the last one, the Kershaw Ram. Um, this knife surprised me. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. Um, normally it retails for about $55 or $60. I got this as a factory second from KershawGuy.com, um, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, normally factory seconds or blem knives have something really wrong with them um, but from Kershaw guy most of them have like a little teeny scratch or something indistinguishably wrong and I couldn't find anything with this but this knife is really smooth flipper um, and has the I think it's called the Hawk Lock G and G Hawk Lock essentially there's a cam that comes behind here and locks the blade and it's a really smooth action um, just amazingly smooth again I can hold the the lock and well I can't do that because the weird angle but the blade just swings freely even actually even without the lock being um, depressed there's just no friction here it's amazingly smooth and there's no bearings in this knife either this is just plain old washers um, amazingly smooth you can essentially deploy the knife with your pinky if I do this right, you know, just, it's a wonderful knife. I'm in love with this knife. You can do tip up or tip down and left side tip up, not right side because it gets in the way of the lock. Um, and this, I think, has a three inch blade. And this uses, I want to say, Kershaw's 14C28N Sandvik steel. Um, it's a good steel. I'd say it's comparable to VG10 in edge retention. I mean, I haven't really touched this in a while, but it takes a razor, razor edge. Um, this is one of my favorite EDC steels, just because it takes such a keen edge, and it holds it for a very long time, for me at least. And this DLC, I think it's DLC coating on this blade, um, wears very well. As you can see, I have some streaks from cutting cardboard and stuff on it, but other than that, I really haven't accrued a ton of wear over the eight months that I've had it. So, really, really good knife. Um, just all of these are awesome choices if you're looking for a higher-end knife, and all of them are actually under 100 bucks. I think they'd serve um, anyone well. If you're looking for a knife that you can really press into, like a high-utility or high-abuse role, i definitely look probably more toward the Manix or the Ram or possibly the Endura. Um, I'd shy away from the lightweight Manix just because it doesn't have an adjustable pivot or steel liners, but really, any of these are going to serve anyone well. So, thank you for watching, good luck in this contest, and uh, have a good night.